This just sold today. It's an old mistake. It's a Baltimore Orioles t-shirt that I got at the bag sale, so I would have gotten it for like 25, 50 cents or something. Flip for five bucks. Wouldn't pick this up again. This was only listed on Poshmark. I didn't cross list it from eBay. It just lived on Poshmark because it wasn't like officially branded. It didn't have a Metallica tag. This looked like something that might've been sold at a concert or something. Anything marginal like that, I don't put it up on my eBay account anymore. I tend to put it on Poshmark only just because Poshmark will hurt less if I lose it, if there's a problem. Not that I think I would really lose my eBay account or get any kind of a problem or suspension or anything because it's not like it's counterfeit Gucci or whatever, but I just don't roll the dice with eBay. Long story short, uh, sold for 25 bucks <clears throat> here on Poshmark. This is a good kind of niche clothing item to know about. It's a rash guard. Those are compression shirts that are worn by surfers, boogie boarders, swimmers. Um, and they're the, the heavyweight performance type fabric. It's like a running shirt, but it's thicker fabric. And these are also worn by MMA people. The MMA stuff will sell for more money. Almost to the point where you don't have to care about brand. It's just really strong stuff. This is a 3X Big Polo Ralph Lauren polo shirt made with a heavier fabric. I typically don't touch Polo Ralph Lauren except in special circumstances. This is one of them. I've had really good luck with the big line of PRL, as the pros call it. 2XB for 2X Big. They're wider than the 2XLs and they have really healthy demand. This was not up for very long before it flipped. This I got at the bins. It didn't sell for very much. It wasn't in the best condition and you have to be careful with these rain jackets, rain shells. If they're a little older, the lining will disintegrate if you put it in the washing machine. And that's something to watch out for when you're sourcing the cell to look at the lining, make sure it's not crumbling. Still flip for 16 bucks. I think I mentioned this was from the bins. It was from the bins. Don't know that I would pick up contemporary LL Bean much of anything at full retail thrift prices. That's pretty much it for Poshmark. It's been dead, like Jimmy Hoffa dead. Um, to be fair to Poshmark, it was down for probably five or six consecutive days. No sales possible while I was out gallivanting around, thrifting. Um, but it's been really, 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 really slow for me. eBay, however, has been pretty good. Even when I was on vacation mode, there was stuff selling and ever since I got back and started putting work in on the platform, my sales have been pretty strong. This is a book that sold for, it says $24.99, I don't know why, it flipped for 15 bucks. It's a rare academic book that was reprinted in this hardbound edition. Took a long, long time to sell, and this is one that I got for free, wouldn't have bought it. This flipped very quickly. This was a bins pickup. This was in my uh, last released video, the haul. It's a vintage fishing shirt, or uh, fishing vest rather, utility vest, could have also called this a photographer vest. All of those are really strong keywords. Be sure to keep fishing in there though. That's one of the strongest keywords on eBay in terms of men's clothing, in my experience. Flipped really fast, flipped within 24 hours of listing it. I got a giant stockpile of these new with tags Dickies pants. This is the first of them to sell after being up for at least two or three weeks, which has been troubling. Sold for 28 bucks. No, it did not. It sold for 24. I don't know why it's displaying the wrong price now. Normally eBay displays the actual sold price here. It sold for 50, not 75. That was the list price. This is a fairly rare and valuable... Actually, I don't know how rare it is because I found it twice recently. The first time I included it in a lot of three, like a set of the first three books in this series, and it sold for 40, which was a mistake. But the time before that, it sold for around this for 50 bucks or more. It's a fantasy series based on the movie Willow that was ostensibly uh, had some kind of creative involvement from George Lucas. Who knows how true that is. But this particular book is more valuable than the others in the series, is my impression. Shadowstar did not sell for 70, sold for 50 bucks flat. Oak Hill is a decent brand when it comes to these sport coats and jackets. They also make pants like uh, slacks and some shorts. It's okay. This is in the Menswear Manifesto. I don't remember what the exact breakdown was when I released it, but um, the shorts should be doing pretty well now. It's a men's big and tall type of uh, brand and no huge windfalls here ever. It doesn't ever sell for all that much, but I've had pretty consistent luck with it. 
Another quick flipper, flip for 35, not 39.99. It's a heavyweight long sleeve polo slash rugby shirt. If you find a long sleeve polo shirt that's made of cotton, like a cotton twill or a heavier cotton fabric, a knit, and I guess not a twill, like a knit, like a heavy knit cotton long sleeve polo shirt where the fabric is thicker than you would have expected, it's probably a rugby shirt, especially if it has these big color blocked color blocks or stripes and those are not all that common so they typically can be worth some pretty good money as this one was 35 bucks and it flipped i think within 24 hours another overnight flipper flipped for 19 bucks nine inch nails official t-shirt it's not even vintage just really healthy demand on this i got this for four got this blu-ray of dark man at a library sale for a dollar it flipped for 10 bucks and change and it went out media mail so shipping was pretty cheap some okay margin on that these flipped for 17 flat uh, cargo pants. They did go out priority mail, but it was in the cardboard flat rate envelope, so shipping wasn't all too terrible. Great bolo brand for women, women's clothing, mother jeans, mother anything really. I think they mostly make jeans. This is the second time this pair has sold. Sold to someone, shipped to them, they tried it on, didn't fit, they returned it, and then they sold pretty much right away for 31 bucks and change. And these have... Um, some distending in the crotch zone right there, which is a hazard of any denim that has stretch fabric in it, like elastane or spandex content, that can happen. So uh, still flipped for good money. This sold for 65. It was a freebie from my neighbor who just gave me a bunch of clothing. A lot of it was new with tags. So a pure profit there. It's kind of a knit uh, blazer. New with tags, J. Crew has always done quite well for me, regardless of uh, whether it's for men or women. Two pairs of these vintage denim shorts sold for me on the same day. This sold for, I think it was like 20 bucks. Lee, typically like not a great uh, brand, kind of a lower end denim brand, but it had this ripstop denim and it was vintage. It was a pair of carpenter shorts, as I illustrated in the last video. Those are the shorts that have that hammer loop on them. Um, and I got this at the bins. Wouldn't have really thought about picking them up for more than, I don't know, a couple bucks. Actually, just double checked and these did sell for $21.99 full price. Another Warhammer book win, at least partially. This sold in a lot for $38. And then the guy DM'd me saying that he already had this one. Or was it that one? Um, yeah, he already had Outcast Dead. He just wanted Thousand Sons. And would I send him a partial refund and ship him the book? I said yes, I refunded him, I think it was 12 bucks, so I still made some okay profit there. I would have picked this up for a dollar. Warhammer books, especially the Horus Heresy series, can be uh, really good flippers. I've had great luck with Warhammer. This is the other pair of vintage denim shorts that sold that day for full price, 18 bucks. Not even a known brand, Khaki Safari, I don't think is really significant. Just kind of a big size, vintage denim, cargo shorts, a lot of good, healthy keywords. Pick this up at the bins. It sold for 30 bucks, 30 flat, bis bis, 100% linen. It's like a sack, like a potato sack that you wear. Um, that's the tag. I didn't look it up at the time. I could just tell it was kind of something that might be worth money, and so it was. And commenters have told me that this is apparently a pretty good ball of brand for women. A beer shirt that sold for full price, 13 bucks, another Ben's pickup. Beer shirts can do pretty well. A Dungeons and Dragons book that sold for 30 bucks. This is part of a series. Dragons of the Hourglass Mage. There are a bunch of books in this series. And uh, most D&D books are actually not worth that much in terms of the fiction, like the novels. The D&D manuals are great pickups. If you can find them third edition, or really, I don't know. I just pulled that out of my ass. I think it's probably really any Dungeons and Dragons manual that you find stands a very good chance of being worth money, especially the older ones, like first, second edition. The hardbound guides and the supplemental paperback manuals are pretty easy money. Some of the Forgotten Realms, some of the Ravenloft books can be worth some, some okay profit, uh, but this is just vanilla mainline Dungeons and Dragons flip for 30 bucks. This is the third time I've listed Trader Joe's clothing, employee clothing, and the third time it's flipped quickly, like within a week or two. So I can endorse this as a Bolo brand, Trader Joe's. This took surprisingly long to sell. Uh, this was up on the rack in my little 
consignment area at the local coffee shop. I don't know if I talked about this on the channel, but I had one single rack in the entrance to a coffee shop down the road from me and almost nothing sold off of it. So a few lessons learned there. This was on there for a while and then it was up on eBay, finally sold for 14 bucks. It's a Jane Austen themed non-vintage graphic t-shirt. Pair of vintage Eddie Bauer pants. Eddie Bauer is pretty okay for the bins. Not so okay typically. Otherwise, it's not worth very much money. Um, but the demand is okay. 15 bucks for these flat. Skipping over a few here. This is a Mortal Kombat novelization of the original movie, I presume, written by Jeff Roven. Here's a suit jacket that sold for 27 bucks. I must have picked this up for a buck or less. I don't remember where I got it. And I don't know entirely why I priced it so low. Probably because it was a suit jacket. It might have had flaws. In fact, I think it did have flaws. Another sport coat that sat around for a long time. Hart Schaffner Marks is, uh, you know, they make good clothing, but the sell-through just absolutely took a nosedive. It's not something that I, I ever source ever for any reason anymore. I just don't touch it. But this is, as you can tell, an older item. Finally sold for 30 bucks. Despite being Gold Trumpeter, which is the highest end that I'm aware of Hart Schaffner Marks line, and I don't think that it had flaws. It had one little stain on the liner, who cares? And it was like a nice, attractive gray plaid with blue hits. Had this been a Hugo Boss, it would have sold within a month, I think, especially at that price, but it took over a year, probably two years. I normally don't touch Wrangler unless it's a vintage shirt, or this now, Wrangler Riggs Workwear. I kind of stumbled upon as something that apparently has some pretty good demand. So I'll be picking this up if I can find it for cheap in the future. I got this up in LA. It's an obscure designer brand, Alexander Plokov. And this is, wow, way back when I was using this camera that I'm shooting on now. It got a little fleck of dust trapped in the lens that created this artifact on all of my clothing photos. That's why it's my video camera now. Although I am looking at upgrading this because of the autofocus issues. Anyway, it created all kinds of issues for me on top of the autofocus for that reason. Um, so I've had this forever. It did sell once, got returned to me, and then it flipped again. It did flip for $90, which is pretty good. Here's that lot of three. That's the one that's really valuable that I definitely underpriced and I took an offer. I think it was 10 bucks off of my list price of 50. It sold for 40. Um, these two I don't think are worth all that much. This one is. Here's an opera DVD. I spent around a hundred bucks on somebody's opera DVD collection. It was like a buck each. I have a giant box of them. A few of them I pulled out to list individually because they're worth a little bit more money. This is one of them. Norma, I don't know anything about opera. Um, but yeah, that sold for like 15 bucks. REI Co-op sells a little better than just REI and it'll say co-op on it, which can be a little confusing as people have scratched their heads at me for in the comments because REI is a co-op, but the REI co-op branded clothing has stronger demand than just REI. Nike polo shirt, flipped for 20 bucks. Not a whole lot to say about this. Here's a pair of pretty beat up, gunked up Tintin graphic novels or comics. I thought they were vintage, they weren't. They were reprints and terrible condition, still flip for 15 bucks. Got these at a library sale for probably less than a buck each. There are two lessons to be learned from this one. One, ass brands will still sell in some circumstances, especially when they are new with tags as this Goodfellow & Co. pair of slacks was would never touch this retail, even new with tags. I did find this at the bins or for, I, well, for like two bucks or less. I don't remember exactly where, but I would not have picked this up for any more than that. Flip for 24. The other lesson is proofread your titles. There's no space between Goodfellow and Co. I don't know what eBay does with search parameters if they, if that would have bumped it out of certain search results, but especially if you're not promoting your listings as I typically don't, any little error like that, if you misspell, especially the brand, if you misspell anything or there's like weird errors, spacing errors and whatnot, I think you can really shoot yourself in the foot. It's been the case a few times where something has sold that was a surprise to me that it took as long to sell as it did and I 
noticed some kind of a typo in the title. This is an equestrian shirt, good writer, sold for full price, 30 bucks. I did look this up. I got it at the bins on my phone before I bought it. And um, this the seller was pretty good, so to speak. Equestrian clothing is another one of those niches that not a lot of people target or know that much about. And I don't find it all that much, but there are certain equestrian pieces that are worth really good money. Believe it or not, peasants don't ride horses anymore. It's the, uh, the hoi polloi, the hoity and the toity that ride horses. A lot of it is really expensive. The, um, I have a pair of dressage boots, which a lot of people um, told me are pronounced dressage boots, Matt. It's dressage, not dressage. I still have to list the dressage boots, but those are worth like 150 bucks or something, like the big knee-high leather um, boots. And I've had great luck with equestrian clothes before. This is a good example. And I think this sold within a week. My sales took a big hit when I was AFK for that long. They were creeping back. Sales have been pretty good since, like I said, I started inputting more data into the data entry monolith. And um, the gods are smiling upon me for now. At least the eBay ones, Poshmark, I will have to uh, do some kind of blood sacrifice. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that it helps you.